in July. So if you want to take a trip to Central Mississippi, that would be a great event to add to your things to do. And it is going to celebrate and com- commemorate the 25th anniversary of the film adaptation of John Grisham's A Time to Kill, which was in 96. Wow, now you feel old. I have just dated you. <laughs> if you got to see that in the movie theater. Now we have taken this idea of celebrating 25 years of this particular movie over to the Good Things Facebook group where we were asking you to go back in your time machine and share with us the very first movie that you remember seeing in a theater and or the first movie that maybe you just got really excited to see in the theater. So you can also chime in at 601-879-4395. Now I've prepped my guests with this question so I didn't throw them under the bus when the lights turned on here um, in the Good Things studio. So I'm going to start with John Kelly. What was either the first movie you remember seeing in theaters or the first one you got super excited about getting to see? The very first movie I remember seeing in the theater was The Muppet Christmas Carol. (gasps) Yes! What year was that? That was 1992. Okay, yeah, that one that might would have been, I might would have seen that one as well. I would have been 10-ish, maybe 11-ish around that time, or 9-ish, maybe. Math is hard, you know, on right. the radio when you're doing, <laughs> when you're trying to sort of, can't, you know, count it backwards. Okay, Miss Candace, you you already shared with, with us, so you can't lie on the good things <laughs> airwaves. We will know what your answer is, but what's the first movie you remember seeing? Urban Cowboy. <laughs> John Travolta, though. John Travolta, 1980. Uh, I, my my father was pursuing graduate work out of town, so I kind of was like, I want to go see John Travolta again in Urban Cowboy. My mother felt sorry for me, so she would take, I think I saw it six times. There, hey, there's there yeah. is no shame there, in your no Urban shame. Cowboy game at all. Okay, Miss Carrie. E.T. E.T., but you yes. have a very interesting um, story within that. Did you make it through the whole movie? I did not make it through the entire movie. No, I did not. I hid under the chair because that thing was just so ugly. So. It's, it's so terrifying. <laughs> I'm surprised you ever went back to the movies. As someone also texted in and said Jaws was their first movie or first movie they got excited to see. What a terrible first big screen <laughs> experience if, if you've never had one before to be, to be Jaws. But, you know, so this gets us excited too about thinking about going to the movies, getting mm-hmm. back into the the rhythm of being able to go and enjoy good films. I mean, the streaming and platforms are awesome. Being able to watch them in your PJs is always fun. But man, there is nothing like the smell of popcorn, the big screen, and getting to watch, um, you know, art really on a really b- with with people you've never met to sort of have that sort of um, entire experience. So, so Candace, will this be an experience at the film festival? How will it work? Break it down for us we have so many layers to this festival we all have uh, master classes again um, that we offer for free um, to in terms of directing screenwriting acting the festival itself that is adjudicated by industry professionals and then we'll have a showing of a time to kill and a gala commemorating a gala slash awards show so as well as one of our key parts is a uh, a concert by Benjamin Wright, Dr. Benjamin Wright, who is an internationally renowned composer who's from Greenville, Mississippi. Pretty so cool. this will be his first time performing all of his hits. He's worked with Michael Jackson, Outkast, Justin Timberlake, and he's still working, uh, producing and arranging his first time to perform in Mississippi in 30 years. Oh, well, that's really exciting. Yes. That is so very, is. lots of things going <laughs> going on in that yes. way. Yes. So, and then obviously you also have the student part, yes, and the student uh, which, part. which brings in our other guests. But will there be other films like by, I guess, I hate to use the word professional because I feel like our students probably will do just as good, but still are professional filmmakers also the submit? The independent films that are submitted that are by, you know, in, professional independent filmmakers, those will be shown as well. Uh, And so we're having opportunities and we're still in uh, trying to decide how we're going to do that in the pandemic, of course, where where we are. Um, Do we need to do it as a drive in? Do we need to do those kinds of things? So we're trying to we're still figuring that out, but there will be film to be seen and enjoyed and from uh, local students yes which is the cool partnership to this yes. so john kelly you are the media arts instructor there at the mississippi school of arts so i mean your kids probably just saw this and started drooling over the idea of being able to get their creative juices going but did you give them any parameters did you sort of just 
turn them loose? Basically, yes. Um, all all of our students really are creative. We, I said, okay, we're gonna um, you watch. The, we've watched the film. We're starting to have a discussion now. Think about a short film that you guys could make that could address some of the issues that you guys have been talking about. And I'm not sure if I want to do- discuss the plot, but um, <laughs> you don't have to. You don't have to give it away. But um, yeah, it, it's definitely. Um, I'll I will keep it a secret till it's unveiled. Okay. But. Um, the students have really come up with a great concept. Uh, they have really good characters. They've already been working on the script. They did a casting session uh, last Thursday. They're really uh, running off with it, and it's I'm really excited for it to premiere. So your ninth graders there at Canton um, Ninth Grade Academy, Miss Carey, our Principal Carey. It feels weird calling you Miss Carey. It's Principal <laughs> Carey. Um, how have you sort of helped directed your kids, or do you have someone who's come in to sort of give them um, direction with the cre- – I'm sure this is the first time they've thought through plot and characters and film and all the things. Well, right now I I try to – because we're virtual um, – I communicate with the students in regards to just being themselves, Mm -hmm. having that opportunity to just be free, be expressive, um, let others know how you feel, especially about the issues at hand. Mm -hmm. And when I tell you they are running free with it, they are doing such a phenomenal, a phenomenal job with just being open and honest and just discussing how the film is making them feel in regards to the current events that's even going on now. So they are, I think they'll be future producers and directors <laughs> and writers and things, honestly. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's kind of where it starts is, mm-hmm. you know, Miss Candace, when you give students in the ninth grade just the opportunity to right. explore, mm-hmm. they wind up at Mississippi School Ooh. of Arts with you, John Kelly, and, you know, really starting to hone that in. Um, where did you find your love for the media art? Um, well, it started back in 1997, actually. Um, that was the year I first saw the film Braveheart. Um, and that was the first time I looked at all of the different elements of the production, the costumes, the music, the acting, etc. And I said, I love this. This uh, There's a lot of artistry here. There's a lot of work being done. And it's all coming together in one majesty, majestic film. And I want to do this the rest of my life. And so I started uh, studying films, watching all kinds of movies, reading books, watching behind the scenes uh, stuff, so that when I finally went to college, I was able to go and study film on a professional level, on the college level. And then I noticed that I really loved teaching. And when I heard about the media, media arts position at MSA, I said, this is perfect, and I have been here for, there for five years, and I would not have any other way. As a teacher who, who teaches students to use their voice and their creativity to create, you know, film, what is what kind of um, message do you give them at the responsibility to maybe make sure that it is authentic and that their voices are, are sort of told and that people will watch this and it will be a representation of, you know, a specific time because we look back, you know, to 1996 and A Time to Kill was a very controversial virtual film, but it created and stirred up a lot of conversation. And that's a cool thing that film and art in general can can sort of do, right? It wasn't there to prove or do anything. It was there to depict a story. And then what you talked about around the water cooler was kind of what was stirring up in all of us. So how do you give or tell film directors that they have uh, to, you know, at least to be aware of the responsibility they have with the things that they make? Well, for starters, I always tell students uh, the single biggest thing about making a film is always write what you know. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't do you any good if you start uh, work making a film on a topic that you know nothing about because obviously it's going to be fake. So think about the issues that are important to you and how do you respond to it, and that will drive your narrative. That will drive your dialogue. That will drive what you as a director tell your actors you need. Um, and... They really have t- uh, taken to that advice, and I've been very pleased with the work that they've come up with, not just on this project, but all the f- all the years that we've been working. Um, they really – these are uh, some very insightful kids we have, not just at MSA but at Canton as well and all over Mississippi. We've got some really talented and smart kids, and it's really exciting for this project to come forward so that we can all hear what this generation has to say about the issues that they have before them. How excited are you, Miss Candace? I am tickled pink, for lack of a better <laughs> phrase. I, you know, when we have these discussions with the students about the film, I come back so hopeful about where we're going because they are insightful. And I told them just uh, just Monday 
that they're making me look at the film differently because they are putting it in a different perspective. And I'm so proud to be a part of this process with them.